Join Sarah Weiss in the infinite field of energetic aliveness and heart-centered wisdom. This is the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. I'm Sarah Weiss, your host, and today I have something very special to share with you. It's a self-healing activation. Every so often in the classes I teach, a meditation comes through that is really potent and I would love to share it with all my listeners and please share it with anyone else that you know. You can download it and share it. And I really want people to awaken to their own self-healing ability. We know that for eons, we have had our self-healing ability dampened in a way. We have been told that we need other people to heal us, whether it's a shaman, a priest, or a doctor. And what's most important is that the light energy is coming into the planet now. The new paradigm that is really starting to take hold has us become our own healer and even if we've embraced this idea to date in any form that we can with Reiki self-healing, running energy, clearing, Qigong, all the different modalities there are, there's still a part of us that has been limited or locked out from us that is now available. And so it's really important now to begin paying attention to your healing ability, your belief about your healing ability, and how you want to take this in and relate to your own being, your own body, your own consciousness. So in this meditation, there's an activation, a transmission that breaks through the old limiting beliefs and takes you into a deeper state with your relationship to yourself and your healing ability. We all have it, and now we have the opportunity to cultivate it, awaken it, and enjoy the confidence that it brings to us. You are your first healer. You are embodied. You are in your being. You are your consciousness. You are your divine consciousness. And so you have the ability to relate to every cell, every organ, every emotion, every thought in a way that brings about healing. And if in that process you get the insight to consult with someone else or to try an herb or a medicine or a surgery or consult with a doctor or healer, anyone else, then follow the steps that your intuition indicates. But when you know yourself as your first healer, you proceed with a different type of confidence. You are not putting your power in someone else. You're maintaining your power base within yourself. And that makes all the difference in how you approach any type of healing. So enjoy Looking forward to sharing this with you. So this is a continuation of the transmission that we received last time in terms of understanding that you are your own healer. And again, no black and white thinking here. Starting from the place that you are your own healer does not mean a rigid approach where you have to heal yourself solely and only. It means that you can be guided to other people to help you. But in the process of the development of our modern medicine, it has robbed us or disempowered us of the belief and understanding that we have this power within us. This ability, it's not even a power, it it's, comes with the body, <laughs> it comes with the soul. So it's not like you had to buy an extra package to uh, get the power to heal added to your, your program. It's not an add-on. And in the process of reawakening this 
natural ability. There's a lot we go through in terms of letting go of the paradigm that we live in. And I've mentioned before, sometimes we have traces of past lives of being mystics and healers and witches and midwives and being scorned for that. But we also had past lives where we were in wisdom traditions and we were healers and witches and shamans and goddess worshipers and teachers and enlightened beings. And, and we had plenty of lifetimes where that was totally supported. So we are in what I would call a darker phase of humanity right now. You know, we have been for several thousand years and we're starting to move out of that. And in that process, we have to reclaim the glorious wisdom we've experienced, the glorious light, the glorious realization of who we are as beings and let that reawaken within ourselves. So we're, we're breaking through the, the five or 6,000 years of history that we learned in school. And, and I always, you know, I was always frustrated. It was like, okay, as soon as I go back 5,000 years, 6,000 years, what was happening before that? And the written history seemed to have been mostly obliterated by the last flood. But still, that doesn't mean our past lives can't tell us or that deep within our hearts, the perennial wisdom doesn't still thrive and inform us because that's an infinite wisdom that survives whatever cataclysms or negative lifetimes we've had. It's, it's all there. And so it's a matter of breaking through these constructs that were ingrained and programmed into us that allows us to reclaim that glorious light and wisdom and consciousness that is just sitting behind that veil or curtain that we're yearning for. And whether it's thousands and thousands of years of incarnating on Earth or on other planets or in other dimensions where we don't have the body that we have now, we don't look like how we look now, but we still existed in other forms. In fact, this body that we're in right now is just a a fraction of a second of our true lineage of consciousness. So we're just breaking down a little bit of programmed concepts here and letting in more light. Um, breaking through this programming and the limited concepts will actually help us realize this earth life more fully. It puts us in the driver's seat. And that's a continuation of the teaching from last time about our intention to take on this form. I'm not even going to say incarnation. It was an intention to take on this particular form in this geometric configuration to learn about this aspect of the divine. And we really are a geometric configuration in the more abstract sense. And so that's why the, the new healing methods that are working on frequency and sound vibration are working at these levels that include the broader dimensions of our consciousness. Again, they want me to reiterate we are, we have been in a dark wave of human consciousness. The light is always behind it, but whoever we think we are now, we are not. And we need to be able to see ourselves through the light. That's who we truly are. And that is what we define as the current spiritual path. 
And I have to say that's only one section of the spiritual path. The fact that we are liberating ourselves from a dark, heavy consciousness and moving into the light is a tiny bit of the spectrum. That's like looking at the visible light spectrum when there's the, you know, 10 other visible spectrums on that line that we can't see. I'm just putting this in perspective and the energy is coming through to help expand this for you. So let's greet Mother Earth. Drop down deeper into your being, into your body, into the, your sphere of consciousness that is your current sphere. Feel your feet and seat. Bless the mess that you are. Relax the tailbone. Feel the centers on the soles of the feet. Great Mother Earth in your vibrational form as energy exchanging back and forth. So really when we're grounding, we're really meeting a Mother Earth in the communication level that she communicates at. Allows us to open that, those channels more clearly and submit to a more powerful, more beautiful, more harmonized energy. And again, I say, why would we even bring this form to earth if it weren't to be part of this flow of Mother Earth, Earth energy? There's no other reason to be here. And the earth is always paired with the sun. And so it's this earth-sun alignment that is the school. And so we need to meet the school in the language that it's teaching. And it's teaching in the language of vibration and frequency and flow and light. So the spiritual path, the emphasis on liberation that has, was taken into a very small bandwidth in this darker age, when we expand into the light and beyond that darker age, we see that the spiritual path is not this linear path. The texts and wisdom that we have provided to us are the best possible way anyone could have kept that alive, but it's still limited. It has to be transmitted through energy, through frequency. And so if you can hold a book and sense the energy behind it, if you can be with the person and sense the energy behind it, or you can be with the teacher and sense the energy of the teaching, you're getting closer to the broader bandwidth. And in that process, a lot of um, material comes up, all the projections, all the history, and then even dream image, images and mythic images and alien images and other planets and star systems and ways that we've appeared in other lifetimes and manifestations. All of that material starts to surface and kind of swim around in the sphere of our being and we don't know what to do with it. And sometimes we become afraid of it. And we don't want to be afraid of it. We, we had incarnations that were darker, some that were lighter, and all of them had an intelligence behind them, your own intelligence. And so when that material surfaces, we just want to cleanse it, circulate it with Mother Earth, Father, Son, and let it refine up. Don't block it. Don't hate it. See, we're taking our personal history into a bigger venue here. So we're not just clearing the heaviness of last week or the heaviness of this year. We're clearing the heaviness of, uh, really, it's about 10,000 years since the last cataclysm of um, 
darkness in order to move into this new consciousness. We greet the spirit of the land, the nature spirits. The land holds the entire history of four billion years. And you, it's not just thinking of the earth in terms of the crashing oceans and lightning and the formation of little cells. It's the earth and its history in the cosmos and its ringing vibration that's behind all that and the relationship to the cosmos. So every time we tune into the earth, to Mother Earth, to the great goddess, we are tuning in to billions of years of creative wisdom. We greet the spirit of the waters. We greet the spirit of the fire and the light. We greet the spirit of the air and the breath we breathe. And we greet the spirit of the ether, which is not really a vacuum. It is the fullness of life force. And these energies are washing over us, cleansing, reorganizing, allowing new thoughts, new feelings, new sensations of the body, new information, to be included in our consciousness. And we greet the spirit of the directions, the east, the south, the west, the north, above and below, the original flower of life, the geometry of life that is living and has a, a tensile quality where it it can shift and move and transform into other geometric figures. That it holds a space for our being here. The, the directions are beings holding a space. It's like the architecture of a house that holds the space for someone to live in it. Allows us to take form here. They're there holding that space. Without that level of consciousness, there would be no form. And we greet our ancestors and the ancestors of our own being, the lineage of light that we are, where we allow the light to grow bigger than the dark. And this is not a case of balancing light and dark. This is moving fully into the light. In polarity consciousness, we have the balance of the dark and the light. And you say you can't know the light without the dark, or you can't know the dark without the light. That doesn't hold true in the new paradigm and the light that's coming in. The light can predominate entirely. And it is a lighter consciousness. Um, it is not the ultimate light consciousness. There's more to come thousands of years after this. But you don't have to stay in polarity consciousness and believe that you have to balance the dark with the light. You can go completely into the light let's say the light phase of the human being that is coming in through our consciousness. So every time we're able to raise our consciousness and forget about the smaller items on our agenda, uh, the smaller items of our focus, we're able to inform that life, that smaller bandwidth with more wisdom. So it's okay to let go and not think about your, your life right now. It's okay to remember soaring in the light sky. 
being in love with every being that you encounter. You're allowed to go completely into love. You're allowed to go completely into light. No justifications, no qualifications, no hanging on to the little picture of our life right now. We're letting go of that. It's like giving your being freedom to soar, freedom to forget about every day right now. And go into your mystical being. And the field is formed, the axis is formed, and the masters and teachers are with us. And they're not in the form that you think they're in. We personify them, but let them be in their vibrational form. But they are love. They're, if you feel the love, it's love. It, it really is pure love. And that is the healing ingredient. And there's pure wisdom that is the other ingredient. So the wisdom directs the love and the healing and the enlightening in the wholeness. Because you can't be completely healed unless you're in your wholeness. Allow yourself to love every being you imagine exists in the cosmos. You're free to love. This is the mystical technology. This is the medicine. And we don't direct it. It's far more intelligent than we are. Okay, now we're going into another stage of the healing process. And yes, there's this little tiny figure of who we are in this darker consciousness on Earth. And it reminds me of my grandson's tiny little figurines that are like an inch and a half high this little buzz light year. And there we are reaching our arms up as a little tiny figurine, reaching for the stars, hoping to be relieved of our suffering. And right now we will step back and allow the entire light, liquid mother's milk of the infinite cosmos to pour down on that figurine that is you. And you'll notice at some point you will, that little figure will drop its arms and feel complete and filled. And now we'll invite the entire of all humanity to be bathed in this healing light that is so much grander than who we are or who we believe we are. We are the channel for this. We are holding the space for it. The power of love is what feeds and heals us. This is overwhelmingly powerful. So when we're in our little selves, we are too small to channel this type of healing. And that's why it's helpful to do it in a circle and to do it in a skillful way. Allow yourself to sit in this light, sensing your body, your being. Your consciousness is reintegrating with the earth. It's like we're like the Buddhist tankas where the top Buddha is sitting up in the clouds of realization. And we're fully expanded uh, like those little cups that those plastic cups that have those that expand. <laughs> Um, and then collapse again. Uh, but we're bringing 
with us and re reconfiguring as we come back into our earth vehicle. You have to be able to expand to a place where you have no desires, where you become pure love, you become the vibration and the frequency and the mind has released the detachments, the emotions have released and you can be in that pure state to do the deepest healing. Okay, take a few breaths and some deeper breaths. Hopefully your body is nicely relaxed and you don't feel like thinking or doing anything. Let the breaths get deeper and wiggle your fingers a little, wiggle your toes a little. Express our gratitude to the nature spirits, the beautiful elemental beings, the directions, the teachers, the light, the wisdom that we may and have experienced the light being greater than the darkness that we were able to form a circle that allowed for a huge channel of healing to occur, which helps usher in more light. And take a deeper breath. Open your eyes and take a moment to adjust, stretch, whatever you need. I think it would be a great idea to take this on as a 30-day plan to listen to the meditation as many times as you can within 30 days to get it set into your consciousness. Share this with as many people as you want and let me know. Place some comments on the uh, podcast page and I'll respond. Blessings, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Earth Love Spirit Podcast. If you like what you heard, the best compliment you can give us is to share this podcast with a friend. And be sure to give us some stars and a favorable review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in.